Well, I think uh, anytime you can go on the road and get a divisional win, uh, it's good for your program and good for your team. Certainly um, puts us in position here where we can make the most of our open date and then five games here in the final stretch uh, in November. So we're in position to do what we want to do. Uh, and that was important. And certainly that game, getting that win, we had a lot to do with that. I think it was um, a really good team win. I thought we worked well um, as a team, all three phases kind of working in sync. Um, I think our offensive staff did a tremendous job making adjustments within the game. Certainly got a little bit different defensive structure than we planned for. Uh, and then I thought defensively, uh, the plan was really sound, and uh, we prevented the skill players from beating us. I thought the front seven really stepped up to the plate, uh, played well, and uh, we kind of bent but didn't break and uh, forced a field goal. And really outside of the first possession of the game, uh, had the game under control. And uh, I thought our cover units were really good in the game, the punt coverage, kickoff coverage, uh, and we made some explosive plays in the return game. Had some great decision-making. Jalen Williams, in particular, uh, did a nice job being aware of the situation. So good team win and, um, you know, certainly going to make the most of our open date as we transition here, um, you know, and get ready for what should be a great November, a great opportunity for our team. You mentioned Jalen Williams. He's kind of had some moments here. And sure. There. What could his role and could it be elevated from? Well, I think Jaden's um, Jaden's been a very productive player even last year at times. Did a good, nice job for us. He's always been a really good special teams player. Um, last year we got a little bit nicked up in the second half of the season, but he's been healthy. Um, he's spelled Jamarcus throughout the uh, season so far at, at X receiver um, and made plays when he's been given opportunities. I thought he had some production Saturday, um, but – He's mostly been a really sound, effective special teams player for us and a role player on offense. So plays well without the ball. He's tough. He's physical. Um, and certainly he's got some height and length. Uh, and he's growing up. He's a young player. Uh, got a couple of years left here. Um, and we're, we're pleased with Jalen and the progress he's made. Well, he's gotten healthy his first thing. You know, he had knee injury early in the year. Took him a couple of weeks to get back and be at 100%. Um, but certainly has practiced well, in particular as of late, a little more consistent. We're trying to get Jamal Bell healthy, Jamal's knees. Uh, that injury that he had from early in the year has lingered a little bit. Uh, so we played Khalif and Peter most mostly in that game at Z uh, as we're trying to get Jamal healthy and get him back for the final stretch. Are your roles at wide receiver clear cut like – in coaching meetings and stuff, because from the outside, it seems like it's other options. Sure. Jamar, it seems real, like, I'm yeah. like real clear with the. Right? Well, Bam and Jamarcus, Bam and Jamarcus in particular, are the two mainstays, you know. And then after that, I think we got lots of competition. You know, I think it's weekly uh, based on full, what we see, you know, the intensity, the urgency, the production and effectiveness in practice. You know, how sharp are they mentally? And then the health has played a role. You know, Jamal's been banged up. Khalif's been banged up. Uh, we did make the move and put Brian Smith over at X, back at X last week. Uh, and that looks like a position that he maybe is, will be better for him in the future. Uh, but, no, I think outside of Jamarcus and Bam, we're very much a work in progress in evaluating those guys each week on how they practice and where we think they're at from a mental standpoint and health standpoint. Well, I think we I think we felt like we had some young talented players there. Uh, they weren't always consistent or accountable. Um, maybe made a few too many mental errors. Maybe their fundamentals weren't quite where they needed to be. Uh, and I think they matured. Game experience has made it more real to them. I think they're a little more motivated, and certainly you can see those guys emerge. Andre Jones has been outstanding for our team. Um, Dalvin Hutchinson has really emerged the last couple of weeks and played really good ball for us as a true freshman. Then you see Jaquan Nelson, Kendall Wilkerson. Uh, so I think we're we're fresher. 
uh, were able to, you know, last year, heck, they'd be games where Zion and Benny, they'd play 65 plays, you know, and they'd be out of gas, you know, in the fourth quarter. Whereas now, I think we've got a good plan for rotation. Might not be 50 50, you know, but I think it's um, to a point where those guys are much more effective as players and the young ones are talented. Uh, and we've got lots more. You know, there's guys maybe that are red shirting. Uh, there's other that are on the scout team. I think we've got uh, a good group of defensive linemen on our team right now for the future. Sure. Yeah, I think it's. I think that there's lots of positions like that on our team. Uh, receiver is one of those. I think defensive line, uh, certainly in the secondary, we're benefiting from from practice having to be competitive. Those guys know every week. Okay, hey, based off of Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, that's going to decide who plays and how much they play. Uh, and certainly, I think you create a little bit more urgency in the meeting, in the walkthrough. Uh, and they know that each rep is being evaluated in practice, which is the perfect scenario for, for your team and for your coaching staff. Raymond O'Malley uh, winning Sun Belt Offensive Player of the Week, does that just again speak to the, his growth in the time? Yeah. That yeah, he's one, one of the players that we're probably most proud of, you know, kind of an unheralded guy coming in. Um, you know, some thought he was a receiver. He really had just production as a kick returner. Uh, we knew his history uh, as a high school player and how effective he was as an inside runner in high school. So we stuck, we stayed the course. He bought in. The guy's probably gained 10, 12 pounds. Uh, he's much more physical. Uh, he's much more consistent and disciplined with his eyes and his footwork. And you get the guy to the second level, and and he's a home run threat. So um, Raymond's a uh, you know, he, he's also a great special teams player. Guy plays uh, gunner for us. Uh, he's a great kick returner for us. So he impacts the games in lots of ways and certainly has improved his stock, you know, as a guy who, you know, has a, a future in this game. What do you think is the number one thing that he's improved the most? Uh, I think just uh, strength, durabil durability, physicality, and then decisiveness. Uh, and play speed as a runner, you know, the footwork, eye di discipline, and then committing to what he sees. You know, I think he's uh, – that's an area where he's – you know, the way he practices um, is, you know, I think it's reflected in the game. You know, if you come watch his practice, you're going to see that same play speed, that same intensity, that same urgency. Uh, and I think all that hard work is paying off for him. Uh, he'll practice uh, even today. He's going to go. He'll be a little bit modified in, in work that he does, but uh, nothing major there. You know, just we have probably four or five players that are a little bit nicked up that'll be full go today, but we'll monitor the volume of work that they do, and he would be in that group. I'm sure you feel like you gave up a lot of yardage on defense, but your defense stepped up in big time plays, especially third and one and fourth and one. Sure. Yeah, it was kind of the plan going in, you know, it was to challenge their patience and certainly play split safety. Um, the most explosive players in our entire conference probably, Omar Bayless and Kirk Merritt, you know, we limited those guys. I mean, um, outside of a handful of plays for Omar, you wouldn't have known they were even there, you know. So that was the plan. Don't let those two players in particular beat us. And uh, they did. We forced them to hand it off pretty consistently. And, uh, certainly, you know, the plan worked. We limited them to 20 uh, outside of the first possession. You know, we got a field goal stop. Um, and then the, the one touchdown late was a, a big play third down. I thought the guy did a really good job. It was a great throw and a great catch over the middle. Uh, and then the trick play was a tremendous catch uh, by Kirk down there in the end zone. So, you know, I think the plan worked. And, you uh, you know, to limit those guys to 20, I think, is is a pretty good feat. Yeah, no, we – Spencer Gardner, you know, is a guy that we consider, you know, almost in the, almost a starter to some degree. You know, if, if we had to play Spencer in games, we wouldn't have any issue with that. He's the backup center. He's the backup right tackle.
and we wanted to get him some time. Uh, he's deserving of that and had nothing to do with Robert's health. Oh, yeah, no issues. I mean, he's going to practice today. Yeah. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it was Rico who was in on that block on the one of the highlight blocks for Dan. Sure. What, what has he done to kind of keep himself mentally in things, even though yeah. he practices maybe, you know, sure. earlier and getting more reps? Well, Rico's practiced better here as of late. You know, I think um, – went through a spell there where he wasn't practicing maybe with the same intensity and urgency that he had in the past. Uh, and a lot of it has to do with Max and the progress that he's made. So uh, we consider Rico a six starter. I mean, um, we oftentimes use the word five equals one, uh, but in reality it's been six equals one for a long time. Rico's been that guy. He's played really steady ball, played tremendous for us last year. Uh, and a guy that, you know, as long as he practices with the right approach, he'll play every week. Sure, absolutely. We'll not only work on Coastal, we'll work on all the opponents in the future. What are, if you had to say one or two the best things about the bye week for y'all and one or two things, eh, maybe it's not so good that we got a bye week. Um, no, I, I think that – we have no control over it. We're going to make the most of our time. I think it gives us an opportunity. Uh, I think Tim's question, you know, is very applicable here. It's a five-day turnaround. Uh, certainly, we spend a lot of time researching how to manage that. Uh, and one of the things you got to do is you got to go put some reps uh, and some planning, you know, in the bank and on the shelf so that you can pull that out when you get to that short turnaround. So we'll do some of that this week and then certainly – some of the things that are unique about the opponents that we play down the stretch here, uh, we'll introduce to our team. Uh, and we're also going to have two practices that are all good on good, uh, competitive, um, you know, and we'll, we'll have a very specific agenda and objectives and goals for all these different areas. We're breaking it up into chunks. We're going to practice three days and work on future opponents. Then we're going to have two days where we work on ourselves and have specific objectives and goals and plans for that, and then give the players two days off for the weekend and come back and kind of turn the page to Texas State. Coach, we thought it was uh, in the game last week against Tech, uh, Arkansas State, had a couple of third downs for Sudolf and then picked up first downs with his legs. Is that something that you guys have been talking to him about, or is that something that in those spots he just kind of just took off and, and did on his own? No, it has been a little bit of a point of emphasis to be more effective as a scrambler, you know, and – not overcomplicate, not overthink things, you know, and, and certainly use your athletic ability um, as a weapon for our team, you know. And I, I think in particular, uh, we had a third and five on the right hash where he did a nice job of breaking the pocket vertical uh, and got got the chains moved on that possession. But absolutely, you know, we, we want him to continue to use his weapon as a feet, I mean, his feet as a weapon, I should say. There you go. Coach Podesclo is an example of a guy that in, in August, I don't know that a lot of us thought he would have the sure. impact that he's had. Yeah. Is, is who else that maybe is there are we overlooking a couple guys that aren't really starters but have made a bigger impact than maybe yeah. you watch film that maybe we're missing out on? Yeah, I think um Podesco in particular as a normal down player, you know, he plays star in our nickel stuff, he plays in our dime packages. Um, former walk-on that, you know, is just a very instinctive, savvy, high football IQ, uh, tough, you know, guy that's done a tremendous job for us. But, you know, obviously the two tight ends that are walk-ons that have really stepped up for our team, Hunter Bergeron, Pierce Meagle, uh, there's no question that, you know, Shane Vilo's a former walk-on that's a starter at center for us. Um, then the, a few guys I think deserve some recognition would be Jaron Wilson, local Acadiana product, has done a great job for us on special teams, played some as a reserve corner early in the year. And then a young man named Brandon Bishop, uh, who's a walk-on that we added, that's from uh, Hillcrest High School in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, uh, plays safety uh, and has been, you know, starting on a couple special teams for us as a walk-on. So, um, you know, his dad's a former player from LSU. He's got a great football IQ, 
uh, really got some good play speed and is a physical, tough competitor. So those are a couple other guys that I think, you know, they're in position. If they continue to do what they're supposed to do down the road in their career, uh, they could be some of the next ones that we're having conversations and talking about. Cameron Solomon, he, he seems to really be mm -hmm. yeah, he's. The, I mean, not that he wasn't not there. He was always there, but really higher. Sure. Yeah, played really physical in the game. You could see that if you're just the, the um, normal fan could tell he was out there Thursday night. But, no, he's really stepped up. We've got several guys that are kind of co-starters in the back end, you know, whether that's Braylon, Percy, Deuce, Cameron. Uh, there's a number of players there that, you know, play equally every week depending on the matchups and what type of game it is. But Cam has done a tremendous job for us back there in year two of his career, um, and just a mature, heady guy, very very stable, very dependable. You know what you're going to get each and every day from him. Yeah, I don't know if you've done this yet or y'all, it's going to happen. Like if you were doing like a mental report card, or, okay, this is what we went into the season saying we got to mm -hmm. get better at. Is there sure. one or two things that y'all still need to get a little better at? Yeah, I mean, I think there's – shoot, we could have a whole press conference on that, but um, – I do think so. I think I probably could give you more specifics once we get to that kind of we're going to do that at the end of the week. You know, each position group is going to have a specific objective and goal for these two practices. Same thing for offense, defense, and game changers. Whether that's conceptually, whether that's fundamentally, uh, or it's a couple critical players that need to emerge, uh, I don't. I think we're very much a work in progress. You know, I think that – um, we can still play a lot, lot better. We still have not played a complete game and completely uh, dominated a football game yet this year. So um, we've played well in spurts in all three phases, but we also have those two or three plays that, you know, keep you up at night. So um, I think like most teams, you know, every week's a little bit different. You know, we're all works in progress, and, you know, we are finding a way to win. Um, and uh, certainly the two games that we've lost have been close. Uh, but we've got lots of work to do to finish the right way. And, and it's it's right here in front of us. You know, I mean, we've, we're in position to do what we want to do here. We just got to go do the work and get in position to do it. Sure. Oh, I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, you think about last year in particular, um, you know, mid-season or so. Um, I mean, it was drastically different, you know. But every time we gave him opportunity, that's when he kind of emerged. I, I think – I'm not sure who we were playing. Maybe Trey got hurt, Georgia State maybe. Um, and then you remember the, how he played so well late in the Arkansas State game last year. So, uh, he's always been that kind of guy. And you always – see his contributions, whether he's a, a gunner or a kickoff return guy. So um, we make plans around Ray every week, and certainly he's well-deserving. And, and I think that that's one of the reasons why he's a good player is he's a good person. You know, he's one of the most big-picture, mature players. You know, I have all these individual meetings at, at twice a year, and he's one of the more impressive young men every time he comes in there. He's got a plan. He's goal-oriented. I mean, he's making the most of his time. He's he's made drastic improvements since we've been here, and I think he'll only continue to get better. Last up for Coach Lee. We're all getting fans and media members are really getting ahead of ourselves here with talking. I mean, is that an issue? I know you're going to probably say no, but I mean, is that does it take extra talking and coaching and sure. to calm down guys to not get ahead of yourself? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think that's why we go about it the way we do. You know, we're going to say. Right now, we're going to live in these three days, you know, and this is what we're trying to get accomplished, you know. Um, and then we'll just kind of turn the page, you know. We, we met with them Sunday evening, kind of gave them a big-picture outlook for the next 14 days. Hey, this is what this is going to look like, okay. But when they show up today, it'll be more of a three-day plan, you know, and then we'll turn the page Thursday, Friday. So, um I think it's one of the most important things that we do 
is to try to compartmentalize and break it up into chunks, you know, and create, all right, here's, here's the plan. Here's why here's, here's where we're headed and what we need to do, you know? Um, and I think our kids have responded to that. And I, I think we need to continue to do that well in the future. Well, I saw, you know, the fact that Georgia State beat Army, I thought was impressive. You know, I think they continue to get better. Um, you know, I think I think that it's pretty um, obvious that Sunbelt football is getting better. You know, I think that uh, the, the caliber of player uh, and then I think that uh, certainly the coaching, you know, you see that the matchups across – G5, the matchups against Power 5 teams, uh, numerous Power 5 wins this year, not just that one that everybody talks about, right? We're starting to see multiple, and then we hang in there and play competitive across when you start comparing G5 conferences. So, um, you know, you're always keeping up with the opponent, that's for sure. And, um, you know, but right now our focus is on these next three days.